Hi everybody, thank you guys so much for joining me today on Educating Adventures. My name is Sarah and we are gonna spend the next little bit of time talking about some of the most amazing environments found all around the world. I'm so happy you guys are with us today so we can learn all about ecosystems. Talking about the environment can be a little bit confusing. Scientists have come up with all sorts of different words to describe the different areas on our planet. You guys might have heard words like biomes or habitats and even ecosystems. But what really is the difference between all of these different words? The biggest difference is size. The biomes are gonna be the largest areas on our planet that are kind of the same. They have the same type of climate, so the same weather, and kind of the same types of plants and animals. An ecosystem is one step smaller than a biome. An ecosystem is one specific area that is filled with lots of living and non-living things and how those things interact and a habitat, a lot of times, that's the smallest one. And when we talk about a habitat, we talk about a habitat as being a place where plants and animals live. So this can be kind of confusing because sometimes scientists disagree on what's a biome and what's an ecosystem, but I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an example to help make sense of that. If we think about a biome as all of the aquatic ecosystems in the world, so we're talking about oceans and lakes and ponds, places that are filled with water and are home to lots of fish and animals that live in water. So we're gonna think about that as our biome. And if we go one step smaller than that to our ecosystem, we're gonna think of the ocean as our ecosystem. And that's still pretty big, but the ocean is filled with salt water and different parts of the ocean have very similar animals. Lots of fish, whales, sea turtles, all sorts of that good stuff. But if we go one step smaller to an ocean habitat, we might think of a place like a coral reef or a kelp forest, somewhere that's a little bit more specific. Because an animal that lives in a coral reef might not be the same type of animal that we would find in a kelp forest. So I know it can be kind of confusing, but today we're gonna to be using the term ecosystem because we are gonna be talking about all of the different types of plants and animals in their environment and how they interact with some of those non-living things. So let's take a look. Every type of ecosystem is filled with living and non-living things. And in science, we like to give everything a really fancy name. So when we talk about things that are living, we call those biotic. And when we think about things that are non-living, we call those abiotic. So when we think about things that are biotic, if we think about a couple examples, those are gonna be things like animals. And we think about animals, we might think about something like a snake. So we might think of animals like snakes or even elephants or bears or wolves or bugs. Sometimes we forget that bugs are examples of animals as well. And so are humans. We are all part of our ecosystems as biotic factors. So we might think of animals when we think of biotic things, but we might also think of plants. Plants are another great example of a biotic factor in an environment. So we might think of plants like trees or bushes or grass. So these are great examples of biotic factors in our environment. But now let's move on to some abiotic factors. Abiotic factors, like we said before, are the non-living parts of our ecosystem. So this might be the landscape. This might be whether the ground is made of rocks or sand or soil and any of the nutrients that might be in that landscape that help all the plants grow or that maybe don't help the plants grow if there's not a lot of nutrients. Abiotic things are also going to be things like our weather. So any rain or snow that you might get in your ecosystem, that is not alive. And things like wind and also the 
temperature are abiotic. So I live in Arizona, I live in the middle of the desert, and in the summer it can be 110 degrees here, which is different than a lot of other ecosystems. So not only in all these different ecosystems around the world are the biotic and the abiotic factors different from one another, but they also interact differently. So let's take a look at some really common ecosystems that you guys are probably already familiar with. Since I'm in Arizona, let's start with the desert. What do you guys think of when you think of the desert? This might be a good time to stop the video so that you can discuss as a class what type of characteristics you might find in the desert. All right, are you ready? So when I think of the desert, I think of lots of different animals like camels and desert tortoises, maybe even fennec foxes. I think of lots of animals that are very well designed for a desert ecosystem. And when I think of plants, our other biotic factor, I think of lots of different types of cacti, like those big, tall saguaro cacti, or even some of the smaller, really prickly choya cacti. But there's one thing that all of these plants and animals have in common is that they have to withstand one very important abiotic factor, and that is that there is not a lot of rain. So plants and animals have had to adapt and learn how to survive without having a lot of water. And a lot of times in the desert too, it's really hot. So that's another challenging abiotic factor, as is the direct sunlight that shines down on the desert. There's a lot of sun here. So in the desert, these plants and animals have to interact with the little amount of water and the hot sun that shines down on them, and that helps them to survive and makes them really different from animals we might find in the rainforest. So now I want you guys to think about the rainforest. What are some of the characteristics, the biotic and the abiotic factors that you guys might find in the rainforest? Again, this is a good time for you to pause the video and take a minute as a class to discuss what type of factors you might find in a rainforest. All right, are you ready? So when I think of the rainforest, I think of two very important things. I think of the rain, which is an abiotic factor, and I think of a forest, which is filled with trees, right? And we said trees are plants, so they are biotic. And these abiotic and biotic factors work together to help lots of different plants and animals thrive in a rainforest. So you might also think of animals like frogs or snakes or even maybe a jaguar, and you might think of really big trees and vines and lots of different plants, even maybe like a Venus flytrap because one big challenge that animals and plants face in a rainforest is there's a lot of competition. There's so many different species that animals have to compete for food and plants have to compete for that nutrients in the soil. So some plants like the Venus flytrap have gotten very creative about where they get some of those nutrients from. All right, we're gonna think about our last ecosystem here, and we've already kind of touched on this one today. I want you guys to think about the ocean and what types of biotic and abiotic factors we might find in an ocean. I'll give you guys a minute to go ahead and think about this one as well. So the most obvious abiotic factor in the ocean is salt water, right? It is filled with salt water and all of the plants and animals that live there have had to learn how to live in an ecosystem filled with water that they can't even drink because it's so salty. So all of the different animals, like maybe fish, who have gills that help them to breathe underwater, and all of the plants, like kelp, which are one of the fastest growing plants in the world, they can grow almost two feet per day. They have really learned how to thrive in the ocean ecosystem because of some of the other abiotic things, like some of the nutrients that are in the sand beneath them. And of course, for fish, there is lots of available food for them, depending on where they are in the ocean ecosystem. And there's lots of good hiding spaces too, if we think of somewhere like a coral reef, like we mentioned before. So all of these different ecosystems, even though the desert and the ocean might seem really different from one another, they're actually connected. 
every part of our world is connected. Every ecosystem impacts a different ecosystem, even if they're on the other ends of the world. So when a rainforest creates all this type of rain up in the clouds, some of that rain can travel. So weather connects the different ecosystems. When we think about rivers and streams, they carry nutrients and plants and animals to different places. So even though we might think of all these different ecosystems being really separate from one another, there's a lot about them that overlaps. So it's really important for all of us to do our part, not only to protect the ecosystem where we live, but to protect ecosystems all around the world. So I'm so glad that you guys were able to spend some time with me today learning all about ecosystems. And I hope to see you guys next time on our next educating adventure.